today I'm going to show you how to level up your painting, so stay tuned for more. Hi guys! So today is kind of a fun video because I have been doing a lot of different types of mediums. You know, my favorite products I'm going to list in the description box from this video so you can find them there, including these Karen de Ash water pastels. Um, I don't represent them or anything, I just love these. You can follow me on Instagram for some behind the scenes clips of me using these uh, products. But I've been doing these mixed media pieces when I'm just getting bored with pouring or I want to try something new. For those of you who are following me have seen some of that stuff on Facebook and Instagram. And I thought, what if I can incorporate this into a pour? So I'm going to show you how I did that and then also show you what I did with this special painting right here. So coming up, just stay tuned and let me show you what I did. Isn't that pretty? I love this painting. But first, one thing I want to talk about is this video was filmed with Overhead Pro. So for content creators, this is a great little setup. If you want to get a discount on your order with Overhead Pro, use ten, uh, Heather Mater Art. You get 10% off at the checkout. And the link is in the description box for that. Now you guys know video recording is a labor of love, making these beautiful videos. So please subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed. I would love that. And I would love it if you would share my videos with people who might find it interesting. Shop my Amazon shop, no extra cost to you to do that and it supports the channel. And donate to this channel if you haven't already. And I really appreciate those donations. All art that you see is for sale, so you could also buy some artwork if you feel like it. Thanks to all who supported my auction last week. It was a huge success. So, here is the dried results of that piece I was working on earlier. And it's been staring at me. I've been trying to figure out what I'm gonna do to finish this piece. I've been working, I'm, you know, I'm not a very good artist uh, realistically. Like I'm not a good drawer. I'm not great at drawing realistic things. But I created this peacock painting using a, a pour. And I thought, what a great way to level up your pores by incorporating some mixed media into there. So I, the peacock and the flowers that you see, that's all mixed media. And I thought, <clears throat> maybe I could use the same process for this painting. So this would be a great way to level up your painting if you're not a great, a realistic drawer. So that's what I decided to do with this piece and I'm excited to show you how. Um, first of all, you're going to need some paper. I found a lot of really beautiful papers uh, on Zazzle.com and it, you can just pretty much get anything that you, your heart would desire on Zazzle. And all different kinds of patterns. You can even specify things like background colors. I was shocked. So like this piece, I chose a carbon black background, but you could have chose blue or white. A lot of them have um, the, the sizes. You can choose what size you want. So it's a really great source for different kinds of paper and I highly recommend using Zazzle. Now, you can cut out the part that you want which I did it initially and then I thought maybe it didn't look natural enough so I decided to tear the paper and that's what I'm doing here just creating like a less refined edge and a more natural looking edge I decided that this paper would go well with the colors of the painting and that's the main reason why I chose it and also um, you know, sometimes you just get that moment of inspiration and I was looking through those papers and I thought, oh, that's really pretty and I'd really like to use it. And then I looked over and saw that painting and thought, yep, those two were meant to go together. So 
that's when I decided to use these two together and see how it goes. Now the thing about mixed media, I mean if you hate it, if you stick it on your painting and you hate it, you can always just paint over it. <laughs> that's the truth, you know, but it is kind of a, it's a risk, you know, but I just don't think we get very far as artists if we don't sometimes just take risks and figure out what to do. So you can see I'm trying to figure out what the placement might be for this and just turn your canvas around and luckily you know you can hold the piece of paper above you know different areas. I decided that I was gonna put it over the area that already had the darkest paint because it's a dark background and ultimately what I'm gonna try to do here is mesh this paper into this painting so it looks natural and that's what I decided to do. Now I'm using decoupage matte. Um, you could use Mod Podge, you could use um, even a, I believe like a clear gesso would probably work. One thing I'll say is you have to work quickly. By the time I spread the decoupage on here, it was already starting to dry and I did thin it down with a tiny little bit of water by just dipping my brush into some water and the paper is incredibly thin and delicate so it does require a little bit of finesse to work with this paper you don't have a ton of time to waste and I didn't want to get glue all over my board either so you can see it starts to curl up right away too so <laughs> have to work quickly and be kind of confident in what you're doing just lay it down there <laughs> very delicately and gently from the center out and that seems to work the best so now it's pretty much just stuck on your painting and I want to make sure those edges don't curl up at all so I just took a smaller brush with a little bit more of that deco uh, decoupage stuff I can't even remember the name of it all of a sudden but I just put a little bit more of that and just pressed it down just to make sure you don't want the edges curling up on your um, on your paper there I mean I didn't if you're going for some texture sure go ahead you know but for me, I was just trying to get, I'm trying to get it very smooth, very natural looking, and then I want to incorporate this into the painting so it looks natural. I just made sure to go around all the edges. If there was anywhere that wasn't sticking uh, down completely, and I just took a little brush. It's real easy to do. Now, like I said, you could in my peacock painting, I did this with a pour. So if you have some pours that you're not excited about, this might be a fun way to just try this technique and see if you like it. Now, I'd love to incorporate this other flower in here or maybe some of the scroll work on the paper. Take, you know, all those pieces of paper are valuable and you can to piece some things together to see how you might like it to look but for now I decided I'm just gonna I'm just gonna just work on that left one it took me a minute to figure out and maybe I could incorporate this whole other piece in there I just decided I was gonna see where this one took me first and the best way to incorporate the pour is to, or I'm sorry, the paper into the painting is to first start matching some of the color of the paper to the color of, of the painting. So I just picked a dark, um, basically a Van Dyke brown mixed with a little bit of carbon black. And I started going around the edge of the paper and working that in. Now this is the same method I use for the peacock as well. I just started working in the background color into the paper. So this will work for your pores too. And I guess I want to make sure those of you who are doing acrylic pouring, um, you know, not all of us are amazing 
drawers. <laughs> I'm still, I feel like I'm still a learning, um, well, well there's so much to learn and there's so much still um, to know about different types of art and I'm still just a newbie <laughs> in a lot of ways. I teach what I know or what I learn or I teach as I'm going but Honestly, there's just so much to learn still. So I'm not a great drawer and I haven't really spent a lot of time practicing. So for me, I just wanted to start using some of these, um, you know, the, th the tools at my disposal in a way that would kind of level up my art. And so that's what I try to do. And you can absolutely do this with your pores too, as well as your, these other fluid art pieces. Now, this is a water-based spray paint by Montana, and you can find this in my description box. I love these because normally spray paint is really toxic and has like a very bad odor. These are alcohol-based, so they have an almost indiscernible odor. I run an air purifier in my studio, so that helps for sure but I thought you know using some of this spray paint this is a Naples yellow by the way um, would help soften some of the edges there and that's really what I'm trying to do I'm building layers upon layers around the edge to give the effect that that paper was meant to be there and I think that's the key to making this beautiful transition that we're looking for between the paper and the painting. So I got this idea, what if I made some leaves kind of coming down off the flower as part of the transition? It's not a bad idea. And um, I'm using one of those cat's tongue brushes. And I, I really like that brush. And it's a fun brush to work with, but honestly, it looked really stark against the softness of the piece, so I decided ultimately not to go with it. <laughs> but I wanted to show you the whole process here, so I think it would be pretty, but I just decided to, I wanted to try to soften. Now, see how that Naples yellow is still a little damp? So when I pull some of that carbon black in, it just makes the prettiest transition right there. And right away I realized that's what I'm that's what I'm going for. And luckily a lot of that was still damp too, so I was able to kind of pull that with a little bit of water. Um, pull those vines or those leaves into the painting as well. And now I just have kind of like a pretty transition. And so that's really what you're looking for is just that easy transition between the, the painting and the paper. So it looks like maybe it would belong there. Now you can actually paint on the paper and I recommend doing it. You can see I'm definitely going over it and it accepts the paint really really well. I'm just using acrylics here, um, just acrylic, golden acrylics for the most part. I'm using a little bit of acrylic ink that's the acrylic ink in um, by Amsterdam, burnt sienna. And those were the some some of the colors that were also with the painting as well. Now, if you want, if you're one of those people that wants like a totally smooth finish at the end, you could absolutely put resin over the top of this. into that really glossy look but I kind of like the matte look that's gonna happen once these paints dry see how I'm pulling some of that paint into the actual flower it makes it a little messier looking so to me kind of makes my eyes feel like it's more natural that result so I do like 
the way that looks and I also think it needs I need to keep going so I take another color this is like a burnt sienna spray paint again by Montana and I give a little bit more there to the transition Adding multiple colors helps with that process. And I got the white, the Naples yellow, and the Sienna there. Now when you hold down the cap on the spray paints um, very softly, it makes bigger little droplets. And if you press down on it hard, it has a fine spray. So. It, they're actually really pretty easy to control, and I really, really love those spray paints. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice if I could actually put some movement into those, so... That's what I decided to do right here, you guys. It's adding a little bit of texture, but also a little bit of movement helps it not look so static. And picking up some little um, see that that burnt sienna and that carbon black some of it's coming through there as well quick tip uh, make, make sure to take off your uh, tips in a jar of alcohol right away after you'd use that spray paint otherwise they're just ruined so it prevents the clogging I just want to make sure to point that out that's you have to do that I learned the hard way <laughs> so this is the painting right now. I'm not sure if I'm done, but I thought it would be fun just to at least show you how this works and the little process of using mixed media. Thank you so much for coming along with me on this journey, you guys. Please subscribe if you like this channel. Please donate if you like this channel. And of course, this piece of art and every piece of art you see is for sale. Uh, you can contact me by email or heathermeterart.com and I can't wait to make more art videos just for you, as always. Thanks guys and thanks for coming. Bye bye.